Hello and welcome to Pokemon Horizons episode 46 review, and what a great start to Rust's debut arc is off to. Starting with Luca at home, which immediately it's nice to see her with Luca finally after all this time. We don't spend too long with that, as the thing is Liko's off to Naranjo Academy to learn about terrestrialization, meeting up with Roy and Dot. And I really love that we're already hearing new remixes of Scarlet and Violet music, as a whole scene in Mesa Goza has its theme remixed in the background. Conscious music didn't really amaze me for Twilight Wings, but their work on Horizon so far has really been phenomenal. So basically the whole episode is essentially meeting a bunch of Scarlet and Violet characters, starting with Clavel and Gator, who give the kids a rundown about the course and terrestrialization. Essentially, the kids' goal this arc would be to go around Paldea and take on Tess and be qualified to use it, Tess being with Paldea and gym leaders. I also appreciate the fact that the kids are being fairly vague about why they want to learn to club out who asks them, as Roy says he wants to take on a strong Pokemon, Liko wants to see somewhere special, and Dot wants to discover world's mysteries. It's not about sufficient, but I think they want to keep things like vague, especially in regards to Terrapagos. That's really great seeing them all get their terror orbs. This is a fun joke that goes on throughout the episode with Nimona particularly wanting to scrap with Roy, but she gets thwarted at every opportunity. As she has to show them their class first and meeting with Hassel and Rika, they get disrupted by the bell. The three kids get to class with Dendro, who takes them outside to exercise and explains that there's two stages of training. There's the basics of terrestrialization and then the implementation, which means that two chances to take on gym leaders. Apparently one of the rules is that they can only get terrestrial experience from battling with gym leaders, so no battling other students. First opportunity for our kids is Liko against Katie, Roy against Brassius, and Dot vs Iono, which for the most part feels very fitting. And we get that info courtesy of Jack, giving them a new app for their curriculum. Suddenly Liko sees Anne, who's also here for the Terrasta course, which I'm probably the only one who does not care about Anne in the slightest, so I'm not really that moved by seeing her. But always nice it's a chance seeing how much Liko has changed since the start of the series, as they decide to battle with their evolved partners. Flora Gatto absolutely shines here, as Liko's a lot more confident in her actions taking the first attack in the battle and not getting flustered when Duot pulls out a super effective move on Florigato. She also takes notice of, like, Duot's physicality, using its shells as its boomerangs to get hit on Florigato. So Liko counters that by getting Florigato to launch its bud, which Duot dodges and runs in. The buds pull back in and knocks the shells away, finish off Duot with a magical leaf. It's a really good little battle, and I think I can say I really enjoy watching Florigato battle more than I did Sprigatito. Also, if Hadeo Elite 4 is watching, and after Nimona realises her battling, she misses it because of Bell again. The kids are all given some camping gear, and decide to go for Liko's test first as it's closest. Clavel gives some words when Sango and Onyx crash the entrance, dressed as students, and Onyx Week comes up with the names Onigiri and Sandwich for them in the spar of a moment. And we get like the best voice acting ever from Sango for it, with how she reacts to how awful the names are. Sandwich has also infiltrated the school as a teacher who says she'll get their registration sorted out, as Clavel doesn't have her names on the list. Liko, Roy, and Dot all recognise them, which is kind of nice to see after Ashley's and his friends sell for Team Rocket disguises all the time. But the last bit of the episode is seeing how the Rising Vault Attackers are getting on as the kids send them a message saying that they're leaving for the course. All the works of a brave Asagi, Murdoch is working at Bakery, Molly and Ludlow are after looking after her Pokemon, and Freed look at Lucy's belt, and the heroes have collected so far, not wanting to fall behind. So all in all, I thought this was a great little setup to the Terrasta debut arc. It establishes our new world for our heroes and what the stakes and goals within it will be. It has me wondering about a few things, like how Nimona is interested in Roy and the Elite Four is interested in Liko. Big battles coming up for them, maybe? And it's a real treat seeing the Paldea cast in general. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm incredibly happy seeing Horizons do its own thing and it struck a really good balance exploring what it wants to do, but also balancing that about Paldea and Pokemon getting episodes. But the actual Scarlet and Violet characters were awesome, so seeing Penny there, even though she doesn't do anything this episode, hopefully bodes well for the future. All in all, I think this does a good balance at showing us what the new arc would be while continuing, like, where we left off in a believable way. As it's different to hanging around on a brave Asagi and night travelling the world, but it never loses a Horizons feel, which is fantastic.